Hello and you're very welcome to another edition of the JMAC podcast. I'm John Mann and of course this, go- this podcast is sponsored by orgoretro.com. Check the website for all your retro gear needs. And today I'm joined by Ashleen O'Reilly, News Talk presenter. So Ashleen, how are you keeping? I'm good, John. Thanks so much for having me on. No worries at all. No worries at all. And um, uh, how, how are you finding uh, the last uh, couple of months, the lockdown and everything that comes with it, I suppose, Ashley? Yeah, it's it's been tough, you know, and it is. It's very different for everybody. But I suppose for me personally, the first lockdown, I was in the office. So I was going in and out of Dublin every day. Um, and I had, I think it was four checkpoints a day I used to go through. Two on the way in, two on the way home. And it was just mental. Um, and I was parking there in like Temple Bar and I'd walk up then to work. And it was just so eerie. There was no one around really really scary times and um, but now since uh the second lockdown i have been working from home so i've been enjoying that it, it's different you know and um, you don't get seeing people as much you know the the crack in the office is always good so i miss that sort of thing but other than that you know it, it gives you a bit more free time to have your own time to maybe get working out in the evening or you know you get your dinner at a proper time when you might have been commuting from dublin so all those things that are that come with it and um, I suppose there are positives to take from all this madness and um, that's going on but yeah just really hoping that we're coming out of this sometime soon. Yeah I suppose how how you find a uh, routine and everything that goes with it the uh, last couple of months like what what way your day is going obviously you're, you're flat out with news talk and um, your uh, GA show sports talk but like what way are you filling your evenings and uh, I suppose how are you keeping yourself busy and not pulling your hair out? <laughs> yeah uh, well, I suppose I play football on Camogie, so we still have our Zoom trainings. So that's what, what we still do. So we have a uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So thank God for that, because I really need a team environment to get me motivated, you know. So that's my thing that I do then in the evenings. And um, I just get on the Zoom class with them. And at least then you're chatting away to the girls and you have a bit of a team environment it's hard now like we would love to be able to get out to the pitch and that sort of thing but yeah at the moment it's just the the zoom calls um in the evenings but yeah for me work wise then i just i just i'm on the on the laptop every day all day and i've recently just moved as well so uh that's all new for me as well so i suppose that's kept me um really busy as well because i've been focusing on um our new house and that as well so yeah exciting times at the minute for us but uh in a weird way <laughs> yeah yes yeah, it's, it's nice to keep yourself busy and i suppose like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm trying to obviously integrate kind of this in the podcast for the last few but like how important is it to kind of talk to people Ashley, and kind of reach out and kind of let people know how you're feeling as well Ashley, because you know it is a very tough time for everyone involved and i think this third lockdown people are finding it very difficult i suppose Ashley. but how important is it just to pick up the phone i don't know go for a walk or kick a ball against the wall anything at all Ashley? Oh, absolutely. Like, especially this third lockdown, I was speaking to a few of my friends and I could notice that they, there was a change in them. You know, I could and maybe they noticed in, in me too, but I definitely noticed in a few of my close friends and you really have to make a big effort. Like, we can't go and meet them. So, you know, you were picking up the phone and you were maybe trying to organize like silly maybe quizzes and stuff like that that probably we didn't really want to do but you have to just make some sort of effort because it is very tough for people at the at this moment because for some of my friends they were due to go abroad and go to Australia and stuff like that and obviously you can't get in at the minute and that meant that they couldn't go and also they had no jobs here so they were really stuck in limbo um, and it's been tough for a few of them. So, yeah, just trying to be there for them and just for anyone at the minute that's going through anything like that. It's, it's very tough and, and it's OK to, to feel that, you know, it's a tough time because sometimes people think as well because the coronavirus is going on and people are working on the front line that you can't really feel sort of upset for yourself or in a, a low because you're like, oh, people have it way worse. But actually, it, it is OK to feel like that. And it's important that you you do when you talk to your friends and, and it is okay. So yeah, definitely. I, I've had a few friends now at the minute that are finding it tough, but hopefully with the weather getting a bit better, it's really helped as well. Um, and we're just hoping that these restrictions lift a small bit anyways um, in the next few weeks. 
Yeah, I suppose it, it kind of has a, has a change of perspective on things as well, Ashley, because you know we have really been in at we're in at it for the last year and a bit, and you know like what can it as a change of mindset? Because as I said, a lot of people has changed people's mindset for the good and the better, and unfortunately the worst. But like you know, what's mm-hmm. your kind of perspective on things, and um, what can you foresee for the future? I suppose. Yeah, definitely. Say work wise, like the commute that I was doing, I live in Meath and I was commuting in Dublin. So maybe things like that, it sort of opened my eyes. Like, I'm not going to sit in my car two hours a day. I don't want to do that anymore. You know, you have to do these things for some extent, but I just say it's opened my eyes that way that I just don't want to waste time unnecessarily. Um, And that goes for everything. So if that is with, friends, family, jobs, whatever it is, I'll not take time for granted whatsoever or I'll not take seeing my parents for granted. You know, I haven't been able to see my dad as much and, you know, that's tough. So I will never, ever take those sort of things for granted. So I think it opens your eyes to all of these things that we maybe just thought it was, you know, easy. It's the norm, just pop around and you can't do any of those things. So I think a lot of us will take loads of learnings from it. Um, but for me, it's definitely just not to to take anything for granted. Yeah. And I suppose we, we can touch on it as well. You know, we news talk, it's, it's a fantastic radio station. I, I absolutely love the guys um, in Off the Ball. I think they do tremendous work, and especially during the lockdown, making all the shows and everything that went with it. But when did you get the ball rolling with news talk, Ashley? And I suppose, how are you finding it? Yeah, um, so I started with 98FM, Dublin's 98FM, back, um, God, maybe five years ago now, I think. I can't even think. I think it was. Um, And I started on the event and promotions team there, and I didn't know I wanted to do radio. I wasn't one of these people that always said radio was what I wanted to do. I work with many people that that is all they ever wanted to do, but I I wasn't in that bracket, to be honest. Um, And I just started on the event and promotions team. We ran the events, but we also went live from the events, maybe on the on air. Um, And I love that sort of it. And I was like, geez, I love the buzz of this and I'd love to get into it. So I still didn't know, I suppose, what area I wanted to do in radio. So I trained in many different areas for the start. And they're really good to me in 98. And they let me work on the social media teams, the digital teams, the obviously the events, and then I always sort of expressed my passion for sports. That's all that I ever knew. And I always said, you know, I, I'd love to to work as a sports reporter. I was like, how do you even go about doing this? I, I to be honest, I didn't really know. And um, so yeah, they just sort of said, like, go out to a few games and do a few reports, take some videos. And so I just winged it to be honest. And I just went out and tried my best at what I naturally knew, I suppose. I didn't have much training. And then I suppose then I joined News Talk. They gave me an opportunity there to work with the the shows. So it'd be all the shows I work in now. I'd work in the Moncrief show on the Lunchtime Live show. And while doing all this, it was always sports, I suppose, that I wanted to, to go into. So I met the guys in Off the Ball and they just said, yeah, go out to a few games and we'll go from there. So I started that, I think it was last year just. And yeah, it's it's just been brilliant. I was delighted the game with the chance and... I just ran with it. I went to as many games as I could and yeah. yeah, just pushed myself as much as I could. Yeah. I suppose kinda of, with the with the current times we have it and with the COVID and everything that's going on at the minute, but kinda of, I suppose I was asking people this last week as well. What's it like to kinda of be going to the games, no crowds, no nothing, um, and no fans. So what's that kind of atmosphere within a ground like, I suppose, Ashley? And, and obviously I think you covered the Ulster final with Mickey Quinn and you know what all, what all, what was that like, I suppose? so strange it really is like I was in Crow Park for a few of them as well I was actually there for and um, it was it was Halloween and there was fireworks play, like blasting outside the grounds and then just no people it was just so weird but good in a sense like that you can actually uh, you can hear the players so we had some funny moments you can actually hear them shouting <laughs> you know either calling for the ball or shouting at one another or whatever it was Um, so that sort of th- side of it's it was actually quite a, a funny aspect to it. But the, that Ulster final they were talking about, I did in Armagh. And the, that oh, that was amazing. It was just such an amazing game to work alongside Mickey with as well. And obviously the results, Cavan won and it was such a surprise. And yeah, it, it was absolute. Oh, you're a Cavan man, John. Yes, yes, good stuff. <laughs> so it was just electric. And 
I there was no crowds, but it was just so electric the game that you honestly didn't even notice in a way. Obviously, it would have been far better if everybody was there, and I only wished it was that way. But um, yeah, no, that day was brilliant. But it's it's just strange, it's odd, you know. But yeah, I'm just hoping to get back with crowds because that's where you the atmosphere. You actually get more out of players when they're sort of giving your interviews when there's a bigger atmosphere about the place. So yeah, hopefully we get back there. Yeah, I suppose kind of watching on with the games and no, been, there have been absolutely no crowds at them and all just like, like commentators and everything that goes with it and everyone along the sideline. But do you feel that kind of like no crowds did that for you watching on? Like, and did you feel that suited some of the team's performances on the day, Ashley? Or do you think like the crowds maybe enhanced the players' performances? Or what's your opinion on that? Do you think? Yeah, we've seen a few shop surprises in the championship like I also worked down in Cork for the Kerry and Cork game and that was just crazy obviously we never ever expected Kerry to be knocked out of the championship so there again was that maybe something to do with the crowd you know then we seen obviously as we talked about the Cavan game and we all thought that Donegal were going to do it but was that to do with the crowd I do think that maybe not having the crowds there, maybe the nerves, the pressure, that sort of thing, maybe was subsided a small bit. So, yeah, in a sense, I, I do think we we got these shock surprises because maybe of that. Maybe, you know, um, but who knows? But I, I, it was a brilliant championship to, to see with no crowds there, to see these shock, you know, surprises. Well, it was just immense. Yeah, definitely, Jesus. It was, it was absolutely fantastic. And geez, it would have been unbelievable to be at the Ulster final. And you're very lucky. It, I was so been, lucky. It, it would have been nice if you gave me a shout. I could have, I could have substituted you on for that day, maybe. <laughs> <You're making> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus, it would have been brilliant. And um, yeah. you're obviously you are enjoying the um, the work you're doing with News Talk as well, Ashley. And I suppose with, with the COVID and everything going on at the minute, like it's all just Zoom calls and you can't actually meet people physically and it's just all done online. And I suppose. What do you make of all that kind of chat, chatting to players online, Zoom calls and everything that goes with it, I suppose, Ashley? Yeah, at the moment I'm doing Instagram Lives, so that's new for me. I did my first Instagram Live just a few months ago. I was so nervous. I, it's some, There's just something really strange about you go live and then you see the names of people popping on that can yeah. see you. And I was just shaking. I don't know why. It's just because you can actually physically see the names of the people. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, so that obviously was a new thing to be doing. I had never done it. So that's what we're doing at the minute. And it, it is tough. You, you can't really, I suppose, get a real personal connection with someone as you're sitting down and, you know, you would if you're in a studio. So I miss that. And like, even when they're about to speak and you're about to speak, you don't even, sometimes on the Instagram Live, it can be a delay and you can speak over them and things like that can be tough. So I definitely miss just sitting down with someone and having a proper chat. You know, you can't beat that. Mm-hmm. I suppose, like, was this uh, work when you were talking, um, is this something you always wanted to do, Ashley? And, like, when you were obviously a bit younger, like what kind of other interests did you have? Like, was it always just tunnel vision for news talk and presenting? And but, like, what kind of other interests did you have maybe growing up? Yeah, like sports was always what I wanted to be involved in, always what I what I did. I played football, camogie, soccer, that, that's all I did. So I knew sports was a goal at some point. Didn't know how I was going to work in it. I, you know, I just said, we'll see. But um, I also love singing and I, th- I took a bit of a sidetrack. I did a competition in London in 2012, I think it was now. And it was a singing competition in the O2 over there. It was called the O2 at the time. And yeah, I won that competition and I basically pursued music for quite a few years. It completely wasn't what I had planned to do, but I this is sort of what it, the journey took me on. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I lived over there for quite a, uh, I lived in England for a year and then New York for three years doing music. Um, and yeah, so that was, that was an amazing experience. But once I came home, I decided to sort of, Put the music to aside for a little while just not to do it uh, publicly I suppose I still sing away myself but yeah I didn't really gig as much and yeah I got into more of the sports report and then and that's where I feel most comfortable and I think all of the music and the performances and singing and all maybe was meant to happen that way and I was meant to get that confidence of being on stage and stuff to 
to be confident doing the reporting and and radio I don't know maybe it sounds mad but I, I do think maybe that was the way it was meant to work out so yeah I, I definitely didn't think from a young age like radio was what I want to do but I think it all makes sense now that it was meant to happen that way <laughs> yeah definitely definitely 100 and I suppose you, you referenced the fact you play football camogie and you know how do you find kind of balancing both of them like I know there's not much you can't there's no playing at the minute but how like when things were good how did you mind like find balancing the football the camogie and the broadcast and everything that went with, with that I suppose yeah it's very tough like when you're trying to do both like I don't know how people do the dual player of doing that for your club and your county yeah. that's very very tough like for say last year our schedule would have been Monday Monday and Wednesday was football and Tuesday Thursday was camogie and then at the weekends as well Saturday was football and Sunday was camogie so we had Friday was our only day off and that was just club so it was just manic you were coming straight from work trying to get to train and um, and yeah it was probably too much to be honest like we do all talk about it now I mean the girls and we say like this year now we're really going to get a good balance on how we do things because we were probably more tired than anything going into games so yeah we'll definitely get a, a better system this year but yeah it's very it, it is very tough but I suppose I feel like I get more done the more busy that I am sometimes in this lockdown and everything when you have more time in your hands I do less <laughs> you know I need to be going 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 and sometimes when I have load of time I'm just sort of pottering about <laughs> so I do enjoy that probably more fast pace um, environment yeah I suppose you, you reference as well uh, the Instagram lives that um, you, you've done in the last couple of months and like I, I was a big fan of them. I was doing them back in June and July I think Paddy Bradley and Conor Mortimer like and I probably I shared the same nerves as you I was very very nervous actually doing them beforehand butterflies mm -hmm. in the stomach because you have people instantly watching and watching so was how you kind of found all them Ashley because I, I, I was watching I think was it the Mickey Burke one Conor McManus big big names Ashley yeah, no, I'm really enjoying them. But as I said, yeah, the nerves were serious. So I was shaking, shaking away. But you just have to do it. Like I was asked to do this months ago and I said, no, and no, I didn't say no. I just just said, oh, yeah, we'll definitely do that. But I didn't go about it because I was like, I can't do that. There's no chance I'll do that. Like so nervous. And people are like, why would you be nervous? You did like, you know, reporting from games live and that. And I'm like, I know, but this is different. Like, I don't know. I just couldn't do it. So I put it off, put it off for months. And eventually I got round to it. So once you do one, you're OK. Like you get into it two or three. You do just sort of it gets easier and easier. But yeah, Mickey Burke on for the first one. He was brilliant. And obviously I'm from Mead as well. So we had a great chat. And, you know, he was saying about Andy McEntee and how he wasn't asked back onto the panel. So, you know, there was, there was big sort of statements out of it. And that's great for me as a host, you know, to be to be hearing these things. But uh yeah, it's been so good so far, and hopefully it continues. Yeah. Yeah, geez, without a doubt. And I suppose kind of like everything that goes along with it. But like, do you feel the whole landscape of maybe broadcasting and with this COVID and everything that's going on, we were referencing it. Do you think the whole uh, landscape has kind of changed? Actually, and do you feel like this is the way forward now? Even when things do go back to normal, it'll be all done online, or do you feel like it, there'll be much change? Or what would be the opinion on that? I definitely think a lot of stuff will continue online. We can now see that a lot of jobs can be done online. There's no need for some people to have to go in and out of offices and stuff like that. So same as for, for the broadcast. And like I know now in radio, in, in, in news talk, they would like the guests in studio. It just it's better sound quality, stuff like that. You do probably have a, a better chat with somebody. But overall, digital is is the way forward. And I definitely think it's only going to go from strength to strength. So these sort of things like a podcast here, this is the future. Like I definitely do think this will just be, get bigger and bigger. And yeah, um, podcasts are the way to go, I think. Yeah, geez, fingers crossed without a doubt. And like I kind of say it to everyone I nearly have on at this stage, but obviously at the, towards the end of last year, the GA was run off, all the competitions were played and everything that went with it. But the government's turned around and said, like, um, GA is not a lead at the minute, actually. And, you know, I keep saying it, there's only so much soccer I can watch. It's probably too much yeah. head at this stage. So I'm presuming you're longing for the, uh, for the day that the GA returns at the weekends, actually. Oh, God, yeah. You sort of plan your weekend around it. Obviously, if I was going to games, you know, that, that was what my weekend was. But even if, if not, you know, you do whatever you're doing. You get home in the afternoon for a game and you're out again and you're back home because there's another game on at four o'clock. Or 
so yeah uh, and I just live for getting out see going like I go to a good lot of the mead games when I can and yeah so just really looking forward to that because it, it's just a, a loss in a way you know it's it's what we what I did most weekends and it feels strange now at the minute so I hope now once it does come back I can get back into the swing of it all and you know be out at the games again but yeah just living for it bit of crack Bit of crack is right, yeah. Jesus, fingers crossed. And I suppose as well as that, like within New Stock, like we see Jared Gilroy and Owen Sheehan, very good broadcasters. Like, and I suppose how much can you have you learned from your fellow work colleagues? I think John Duggan there as well. Like, there's some seriously impressive broadcasters within New Stock, Gasling. Oh my God, amazing! And to just even to work alongside them for the last few years, even watching them from afar, I do my everyday job. I do researching. In, in news talk during the day um, or during the week and even just watching them in action has been amazing because you do learn so much and Jer is great you know I've went to him a few times with ideas or you know I'd love to learn how to do this or do that and you know they've always been there for for advice and to steer you in the, in the right direction so yeah it's it's just immense to to see them doing it because I suppose you get you sort of think to yourself geez I can do this then you know you see other people doing it and then you're like oh right okay and that's sort of what happened to me I knew I loved sport and I knew that I I liked presenting that but I was like I wouldn't be able to be a sports reporter like no chance and they sort of told me like of course you could like go out to the games and then they sort of critique me when I came back and say oh right well you shouldn't do this but you could do could have did that or whatever so yeah I I'm loving it so far and yeah, just thankful for all of them to be able to watch them and and learn from them. Yeah, I suppose it's like anything else. Anyone for now watching on, like, well, what kind of got you involved in the media? Like, suppose what route did you take to get involved to where you are now? And um, yeah, like, how 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 much are you enjoying it? I suppose. Yeah, well, I suppose the main way was through ninety eight FM. That was, and I'd say that to anybody that was trying to get into radio, a lot of people started on the events and promotions teams. So you'd have a lot of the main presenters, even like our CEO, he he started on a promotion team, you know, going out in, in the cars. I was one of the Thunders that went out driving the uh, Kajar Renault cars or whatever they're called. Um, and we had great crack, but th- that was such a good stepping stone for me because I learned how radio worked from afar, like watching how they sold it, like for ads or outside broadcasts or whatever it was. And then also then we got a chance to be on air from them events. So if anyone was looking to get in, that's always the way I would say. Um, definitely try to go that route. Um, but yeah, that, that's what the way it happened for me. And I just got an opportunity then from uh, Chris Doyle. He would be quite high up in Communicorp. And he asked me, would I like to, to join uh, News Talk from there? So I was delighted that I got the opportunity because I suppose at that point I wasn't sure what way I was going or you know you're always wondering what's next and yeah he offered me that and yeah I've been in news talk ever since so yeah it's been it's been good <laughs> yeah and even at that as well like I suppose the GA and like it, it, it's playing it's in my, life, in my life anyway it's been the pinnacle for me like but like how important of it how important is the people of Ireland like and I suppose you're kind of hearing bits and pieces in like on the ground and radio but like it's obviously a massive miss at the minute, actually, and it's a fantastic outlet for everyone. And it's, um, you know, we'd love to have it back and everything that goes with it, I suppose. Yeah, like even just to be able to go down to the to the local GA club, I miss that. You know, I miss that crack of just going down to training and seeing everyone like on the pitches playing all the different teams and going into the clubhouse after. That sort of thing is what I really miss. And I know from I'm chatting to people as well, that's the main thing. You know, yes, of course, we want all the county football to return. Like, inter-county is brilliant, and it's it's great to be able to sit in on the weekend or going to games or whatever it is. But club, I think, is so important for all of the community. You know, so many people are involved. It gets so many people out, keeps everyone's sort of heads right, and I think that's so important. So, for me, anyway, the, the club is where I would love to be able to just get down and um, yeah, just be able to train and yeah, go out for a night out with the girls in the club. That'd be absolutely brilliant. <laughs> yeah, geez, without a doubt. And 
I suppose kind of touching on to meet football over the years and obviously if you're keeping a good eye on it and I think the one thing that I was, I was talking to Kevin Riley there last week uh, the former me captain and he was kind of remarking on 2010 and I'm presuming you probably were looking at the fortunes of that and everything that went with it but like you know what what have you made of me football over the years actually if, you know and I suppose Leinster it's a very hard competition to be involved with obviously Dublin's dominance but you know what have you made of me football and the progression o- over the years I suppose yeah, well, I suppose I grew up seeing Mead in All Ireland. Um, you know, I would have been quite young, but I, I seen them in the nineties, and that was just absolutely brilliant. I've I've really deadly memories from being a child and seeing the Sam Maguire coming back to Mead, and you know, we lived just near the county club there, um, not far from Dunchoclin, and across from my primary school actually, and that's where they used to come with the with the cup and we've brilliant memories of that so all of that was just you nearly think it was always going to be that way that's that's the way it is meter brilliant you know this is it now like and then there was a big drought and the drought is continuing you know but I suppose that happens every every county you know we've seen the likes of the Kerry teams and now obviously Dublin are dominating so it's just the way it goes but I suppose in the last few years you know they went through a rough patch but since Andy McEntee has come in I've definitely seen a huge difference in, in the me team. And there's a lot of positives, a lot of young lads coming through. You know, we've seen Jordan Morris last year. You know, a lot of lads that we never had heard from. And he's really bringing on all those young lads, like in their 19, 20, you know, coming off the bench last year. It was brilliant to see. So I think that's what we need. And if you can nurture those players, you know, we, it will turn again. It, it always will turn again. At the minute, we're seeing the dominance of Dublin. But... It will change. I do believe that. It is tough for the minute in Leinster for them lads to be coming out every year. And if you just think in your head, I suppose it's the start of the year, like, oh, we'll go for, we'll go for the provincial title. But even for, even for that, it's sort of tough for them to get. So, you know, that must be hard. But you, you can't sort of go out with a negative attitude, yes, but you have to go out positive. Um, and I do think the tides will turn and we will see a change in it all. It has to. You know, it has to. It's happened. We see in the Kerry teams. That's what I keep telling myself. And there was a change. So, yeah, I definitely do see a huge difference in me. Then it's positive. So hopefully, you know, they they get some something out of it in the next few years. Yeah, and obviously, like you, it's a massive part of me to history. Uh, I suppose 2010, actually, and I suppose what's your kind of memories from that um, Leinster final um, against against Loud? I suppose that was the last time anyone could like. Well, I suppose won a Leinster title, but like, what's your memories from that? I suppose it was for you could have won it. It would have been nicer to win it a better way, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was actually on holidays. I was on my six was my six year holiday. Yeah, I was in. Um, Crete, yeah, I was in Crete, and I remember us all watching it, and it was just, we were like, uh, gutted, like, we were all sitting there gutted, being like, oh my god, there was loads of us, like, from all our school, basically all our, like, sixth year, a lot of us had gone together, um, and yeah, we were all gutted, like, coming to the last few minutes, and then we just couldn't believe it, and then the scenes afterwards were just something else, obviously you wish you, you'd won it in a better way, but, uh, Mead still won that day and um, you know that that was the outcome. I went to college then in Dundalk in Loud and my god we never heard the end of it like it was just always a conversation that came up and yeah I, you do feel for them like of course you do like that day it, it's not nice I know if I was in that position or you know to lose in that way oh, it would be absolutely heart-wrenching but um yeah as a Mead supporter, I obviously was delighted, but uh, of course I wish it had happened in a different way because my heart did break for loud now, you have to say. Yeah, definitely. Of course, guys, this podcast is sponsored by orgoretro.com. Check the website out for all the retro gear needs. I suppose, actually, you know, as well as that, you have your uh, sh- uh, show, uh, sportstalk.ie. It's a GA show for anyone interested in getting involved with it. And I suppose, how are you finding all that and how's it going for you? Good, yeah. Um, it's it's something new for me. You know, I started that probably just less, oh no, maybe over a year ago now, and it's separate, obviously, to news talk. So it's nice to to have sort of two things on the go in in a sense. Um, because you need to, I think, if you're being a sports reporter, you will sort of you, you sort of have to um freelance a little bit, and that's what I'm doing. So it was great to get the opportunity with sports talk. So so far it's it's been going well um i've gone out to a few games with them we did the Potty O'Shea tournament last year as well that was brilliant you know me hollamer was there 
couldn't believe it. I got to interview him, and that was amazing. That was just couldn't believe it. Like if I said there was one person that I always want to interview in GA, it it would be him. So that was brilliant. And then obviously we started the podcast. So we did the first season last year, and it was more about going out to the county and where the players were from to get a sense of their home. Um, obviously that changed because of COVID, but yeah, we did a few episodes where we did that. So we went to Armagh, we did Stephen McDonald and Amy Mackin. Uh, we did went to Down and we did Marty Clark and Brandy McFay. And then we, where else did we go? Oh, we went to Cork as well to Hannah Looney and Shauna got helping. A lot of real variety. And yeah, we'd great crack. And as I was saying before, it was nice to just sit with them and be able to chat away and have a bit of banter between the three of us, you know. Um, but yeah, so now it's it's been online, it's been on the Instagram lives. And look, at the minute, I'm delighted just to be able to keep doing them. But hopefully, once all of this ends, we'll we're, we're able to get out and go and visit people again, you know. And um, that's what I'd hope for anyways. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's going great. And I suppose... It, it, it really is the future, actually, um, because I think the great thing about it is it's just instant. People can get involved straight away and no better time to start something new, obviously, with this podcast I'm doing now. And like this is a fantastic time to actually just, you know, rip up the sheet and just say, right, here I go. Here I go. It's something new, essentially. Yeah, a lot of people have said that to me as well, that they it sort of opened their eyes to say they were doing a job before and they're like, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm life short. I'd rather put my energy into something I actually am passionate about or really want to do. So I think if COVID's given us anything, it's given us that. It sort of made us sit back and just stop for a minute and think things through. Because I suppose for a while, a lot of us would have probably been in a rat race of just, you know, keep going, keep going, plot along, plot along. And it's hard to get out of that. So if we do take anything positive from all of this, we, we it could be that that you know it's given us a sense of time to think, you know, about what's what's most important in life. And as you said, they doing the podcast. That's what you really want to do to give it a chance. Now, now is definitely the time. No better time. Yeah, definitely. And I suppose like, I, I was I was remarking to Jackie Hurley there not so long ago, and uh, like I was thinking, like, what's the verdict on the kind of the ladies and men's kind of t- t- divide at the minute? Like, do you feel there is a bit of a gap kind of closing up? Like, I know Lidl are doing absolutely fantastic work, TG Carr mm-hmm. are promoting the game so well, but do you feel like the gap is kind of closing down? Like, I know there was record attendances at the ladies' final there, I think it was two or three years ago. So, do you feel, you know, things are on the up for ladies' football? Absolutely. Like when I was growing up, I never seen ladies football or camogie on the TV. You've seen the odd game, but not really. So I never really thought it was possible to to like to go out and to 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 play for my county and be on TV. I just thought like, ah, no, that's just the men's get that. Like you wouldn't really see the women doing that. And that's the way I grew up thinking. But now, you, you know, the women are killing it. And yeah, all like a lot of my friends I talked to them might only be into sort of GA like lads. They they know the the ladies GA players now and or LGFA players I should say. Do you know they they know their names and they're aware? And I'm like, geez, that is the difference that that like, we're actually seeing a change. And yeah, it is because little are are great sponsors putting a lot of money behind it and and getting it seen. And that's probably the most important thing. We need to get it seen. So yeah, over the last few years, been really, really positive change. And I just, I hope it does continue. You know, we've still seen, a, a, there's a lot that needs to change. You know, it's it's not all great yet, but that it's on telly more, it, it's on radio more, the media are covering it more. All of those things are just really positive stepping stones. Yeah. And I suppose it is probably unfair, the kind of cri- like the, the criticism or the lack of coverage that any football has got over the years, because I have absolutely no doubt the ladies are putting in the same amount of effort, especially county mm-hmm. county girls as well. And I was watching the ladies' finals last year or last year on TG Carr as well, and the standard was so good. Me, me, lady footballers were fantastic. Mm-hmm. So, you know, how it, like, it, it probably it probably would frustrate you maybe over the years, I suppose. Oh, yeah, like definitely. It's, I'd say a lot of, a lot of men didn't realize that the t- like the talent that ladies football actually does have and women maybe you know women as well i'm not going to say it was all men no way you know people didn't realize that the talent that these girls have we all have and that d- does get frustrating and it goes right down to club level like there's many times that 
you get pushed off the main pitch because you know there's another game coming in and I actually last year we got pushed off a main pitch because there was a minor team a minor lads team their game was on and they said that they had a bigger attendance than us so they should get the pitch and our manager was like sorry this is the senior ladies team of the club it doesn't matter who has more attendance and anyway like it was just the fact that they actually came out their excuse was they would get more people at the game so we, we're always seeing it but look I definitely have seen a change definitely over the last few years so it, it's it hasn't been easy at times now, of course not, but uh, no, it's definitely, it's getting more positive and we're getting more opportunities and, and that's all we ask for. Yeah, geez, I agree with all that and long may it continue. And I suppose, are you, are you enjoying the kind of quality of uh, the game at the minute, I suppose, in ladies and men's football? Like I know regarding maybe the men's football, like it's, it's, it's probably quite defensive over the last couple of years, definitely in the early noughties was extremely good to watch. And I can remember the me teams of the early noughties as Graham Garrity just was, you know, shooting the lights out. So, you know, like how much do you think it's changed over the years, even for yourself personally watching on? It's changed massively. You know, there's, there's a new rule every minute. You're like, you're trying to keep up with it all at this stage. But as you said, it's been quite defensive the last few years and, I don't enjoy that as much, you know, it's obviously not as exciting to watch and my uncle now, he would be um, a big a big fan and I would always chat away to him about all of the games and, you know, as someone, uh, he's in his 60s and he would always say, oh, like, this is terrible to watch, this defensive stuff, you know, he wants to see the long ball in and, you know, that's old school and I do enjoy watching that too, like, oh, there's nothing better than seeing a long ball into a corner forward and, and taking on their man or woman. And that's something that's changed because of the mark as well. Do you know, I don't, I don't agree with that because you're you're putting a long ball into into a full forward and they're just catching the ball and they're just going to go and take their free. I love seeing them take on their player. And so I don't enjoy that side of it as much. But you can't but say the game has evolved over the last few years for the better. You know, players wise, people like they're they're way in way better condition, way more skillful. Um, that side of things, it's really, really evolved. So, yeah, there's uh, obviously a few questionable rules at the minute, but overall, it is it is way better position than it was in, say, what, 15 years ago. It, it is nearly like a different game in a way. Yeah. I suppose kind of watching on the Leinster finals over the years, I can know, I keep remarking on it, but like Dublin are strolling by 10, 15 points any, every Leinster final. And like, I suppose... From a men's point of view, like how frustrating is that to kind of like if say if Mead won a Leinster title, like I don't know last year, year previous, like it'd just be the best moments of your life, even like Claire West Mead, anyone bar Dublin essentially would be fantastic. <laughs> how like how annoying is that to probably just watch Dublin just coast home every single year? It's so annoying. It's just uh, like as I was saying for those lads that must go out every year thinking a provincial title is even really really tough. To be getting here now do you know Ulster is so open and um, as we've seen Calvin doing it you know it's so open there's a chance there and you nearly need that at the start of the year to you know to motivate yourself obviously you have the league but you know the All-Ireland is where you're going for so you start off with the Leinster and or you're in your provincial and yeah Leinster has just been dominated by the dub so it's very tough to watch it, it's obviously not as exciting as a Mead fan as it was back in the 90s you know it definitely isn't but I just just hope that the tides turn because uh yeah it, it's it's tough to watch on at this point <laughs> yeah geez, without a doubt. <laughs> and I suppose can you have any kind of aspirations to kind of maybe jump on to like TV or like RT or Virgin Media or like are you happy enough with news talk for the minute and the, the experience you're getting with that I suppose delighted with the experience I'm getting 100% I suppose TV wise Oh, it'd be the dream, you know, it'd be the dream to be a GA presenter. That That's my ultimate dream, you know, on TV, that, that'd be it. <laughs> you know, it's out there now, so I'm going to manifest this now. That's what I say to myself. <laughs> but no, look, I'm delighted at this minute to be getting all the opportunities I am. And I'll keep plodding along with them, get as much experience as I can. And whatever happens, happens. But yeah, I think GA is always is the the area or the route that i'd like to go down sports wise yeah and i suppose i was, I was kind of asking as well jackie hurley there in my last podcast like i was saying thinking like do you think you're, there is a good divide in men and women in kind of sport broadcast now like do you feel you know there is like a nice wee split there at the minute or do you feel more women could be involved in journalism and 
the shows like news, news talk RT, everything that goes with it we're definitely seeing more and more women get involved which is great and i suppose i didn't really think about it or believe i could do it because i couldn't see other people doing it i didn't see many women doing it so i suppose i i, I didn't really think about it that way because i was like oh sure they, w- they wouldn't want me to be involved but when I just went and approached and asked off the ball, they were more than happy to give me an opportunity. So, yeah, we're definitely seeing more and more women getting involved. It is tough. You know, you feel a bit, I suppose I felt a bit intimidated at times, you know, just because I maybe thought they know way more than me. I, I won't be as good as them. That sort of way I was intimidated, not by the lads or anything themselves, just myself thinking that I probably wouldn't have been good enough. But I think women have that sort of think that way and uh, I don't know maybe men don't think like that as much I don't know but yeah it's it's it is tough to break in but you know when you get your one opportunity just take it and go with it and I would uh, advise any women to just you know reach out to maybe local radio or newspapers whatever it is emails 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 they definitely want women to be involved just just ask and just approach because I suppose that's what held me back for so long. I, I didn't ask. I just was waiting for something to pop up. But actually, once I asked, they were so welcoming. So, yeah, we're definitely seeing more more women involved. And that's great because it'll do so much for, for ladies' games in general, you know, in every sport. So, yeah, like Jackie Early, she's amazing. Like, I've watched her from afar for so long. And you need people like her to, to actually see them doing it to realize, geez, actually, yeah, could do this, you know? Yeah. I suppose, like, even regarding the football and Camogie, you're involved with as well, Ashley. Like, you know, like, if commitment is probably through the roof, um, even for club at the minute, it's, like, even myself personally, we're being sent runs every day of the week at this stage, and, like, even in county. But, like, do you think the commitment will ever kind of pipe down a bit, or like, do you feel it's a bit mad, or what would be your opinion on it? Yeah, I definitely think with the county setup, especially, like, it's, it's very, very tough on, on on lads and girls. Like it, it really is. Like to be balancing family, relationships, work. You know, we've seen a lot of the players that should be playing at this point walk away because it's just been too much. You know, so I do think there needs to be a balance there, and I suppose it'll come with the structure and of the the championship and how that looks and. You know, they, they it has been getting better each year that, you know, they're prioritising club and over, well, not club, over county, but they're giving time to each. So, it, you know, it's actually feasible for, for lads and girls to be actually be able to do both because it, it is immense. As you said there, with club, like we're just a club level and it's it can be very, very full on. So we obviously all want to be there and we all want to be involved, but you need to have the balance where, especially if you're a dual player you can do both but you're comfortably able to you know live your life as well and not be missing all these big occasions or you know not be able to put all your time into work and stuff too so yeah I think a balance needs to be struck there in between it but I think it's getting better over that I think people realize more now the GA realize you know there's a lot more conversations about it when say a year or two ago we didn't really hear about it so yeah we'll definitely see a change I think. Hmm. And obviously, Bar Cavan with an ultra time down in Armagh. <laughs> yeah. What would be some? Of, what would be some? Of, like I know you're you're a couple of years in the broadcasting game at this stage, but what would be some of your kind of memorable moments over the last couple of years, or ones that kind of stood out for you that you've seen uh, firsthand? Yeah. Um. Well, my very first, I felt my very very first game was it was a league game, but it stands out to me because it was my first ever time reporting. And I, they asked me what game did I want to go to, and I said I'll go to Park Talton in Mead because I know them. It'll, you know, it'll be, it'll be easy to sort of know where I'm going and stuff. Because I was very nervous, you know. You don't, you don't know what you're doing. You're winging it essentially. Um. So yeah, I went there for the. It was Armagh and Mead in the league. Um. 2018 was it? Maybe it's 2019. 2019 actually. And um, me got the win in the end, but um, you know, I was interviewing the likes of Kieran McGeaney after, and you know, the ladies also played beforehand, the Mead ladies, and it was a double header. So seeing the two of them play alongside each other in a double header, we don't see that all the time. That was brilliant to see um, as well. So that was my very first game. So I have a lot of good memories from going to that because it was my first. But I suppose, yeah, I, I this year was probably the highlights would have definitely have been the Ulster final. Just the raw emotion from the Calvin lads, just grown lads coming off the pitch, crying their eyes out, could not believe they had done this. 
like speaking to Mickey Graham after he was just shook shook and that was what it was all about for me I was getting emotional for them I couldn't believe it like as a sports reporter you live for the underdog well I do anyway I live to see the underdog come out on top and mm. that's what they did that day so definitely that game um and also then in Parky Cueve Cork and Kerry when Cork not Kerry out of the championship I worked so, worked alongside uh, Kieran Donaghy for that game yeah. couldn't believe I was working alongside Kieran Donaghy and then to see <laughs> Kerry being knocked out it was just mad and again Cork were just couldn't believe they had done it and they had all, all going out of the stadium afterwards and all the cars were beeping and people were coming down from Cork City so yeah they're probably my my top two or three games <laughs> I've given you yeah it is well, checks in the post of that glow and Calvin reference anyway yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> Tell me this, Ashley. Like, if there's a young Ashley and Riley in the country and uh, might be watching on, and they're thinking, how do I make the breakthrough? Or, you know, they're maybe holding themselves back. Or, what kind of advice would you give a young Ashley and Riley or anyone at all trying to make the breakthrough to the career that you have, I suppose? Yeah, that's mad. Uh, a mad question for me. I feel like I'm still figuring it all out myself. But, yeah, the best advice that I would give anyone is to try and get send emails and don't stop until you hear back keep sending emails and um, you know even if it is to get that work experience or as i was saying to to get in on the promotions or events teams obviously when everything picks up again i know that's tough at the minute but even if there's somebody that's into it and would just reach out to even if you see on the website for any local station or whatever it is other names of people that work there reach out to them and ask them how do they do it and they like go, oh, yeah, but I actually know someone that, you know, you might be able to get in here and do experience. It's just about trying your best to to get contacts. So, yeah, just send as much emails and stuff as you can and always be perfecting, like, what you do. So, for me, it's sports reporting. So, you know, I'd always be keeping up to date. I made a Twitter account. Um, I always had one, but I wasn't really active. That's so important for sports because that's where, you, you know, you see all the biggest sports journalists updating the whole time so get on that you know keep updating with little updates and then from there you never know people might reach out and say you know uh you know go out to this game for us or whatever it is you want to do so definitely a twitter and then obviously the podcast is the way to go if you can do it it doesn't matter if nobody listens it actually does not matter it's about you perfecting yourself getting as much experience um as you can and yeah you, you never know what will happen after that yeah, I suppose what does the, uh, I know it's all very unforeseen at the minute, but what does the future hold uh, for Ashley O'Reilly? God, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, at the minute I'm living up north, so I just moved. So it's uh, it's all very new for me. So I'm living in County Down. Um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it feels, it's strange now, so it is, it's different. But yeah, I'm just getting settled here and still obviously working for new stock we're working from home so that's all good um, and hopefully that that will continue and um, if not it's it's not that far it's about an hour 10 minutes or so uh, to meet or in, into Dublin so it's, it's grand but yeah hopefully just continue with the the sports report and you know I can't wait for the GA to be back up so I go out to games keep active online with with my podcast with sports talk and you never know one day we could get get a gig presenting on tv you know that that's the aim that is the ultimate aim i suppose if i don't uh, say it out loud i won't believe in myself or i won't try to achieve it so <laughs> that's why i say it out loud so i actually say right i'll try and give this a go <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, I, I could take you under my winning J-Mac podcast. Yeah. No problem. See where it goes. <laughs> yes, John. Thank you. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> and last but not least, uh, who would have had the biggest kind of influence on you over the years, Ashleen? And, you know, who would you kind of look to for inspiration, even in the broadcasting world, I suppose, Ashley? Yeah, I suppose maybe close to home. It, it would have always been my uncle. He is just absolutely sports mad um and he doesn't have any kids of his own and I suppose I was always the one who, I I was very close with him and I, I chat to him away about all sorts of sports he'd always um cut out the best write-ups in the paper and he'd always leave them in my room for me and that's how I think I got a real love for sports so yeah him he's definitely uh Michael he's definitely probably the person who's influenced me the most 
And then I suppose, like broadcasting wise, it was off the ball. You know, that's where I always watched on. I loved their sort of laid back style. And, you know, it was just lads and women just enjoying their sport. It wasn't anything serious about it. And I suppose the likes of Jer and Owen Sheehan, he's just, Owen is like, I, I think Owen is like maybe 28 now. 20. Yeah. He's so young and couldn't believe it, like how well he's doing. But he's just so good because he's just perfected what he does and he just loves it. So, yeah, watching the likes of them is probably uh, been, and obviously me and Murray, I think I mentioned him before. It's hard to think on the spot. You have so many people. But, yeah, me and Murray, was um, massive as well for me. Yeah, that's super. <laughs> That's super. Well, actually, you know, Riley, thanks a million for joining me on the JMAC podcast. And of course, this podcast is sponsored by orgerretro.com. Check the website out for all the retro gear needs. Ashley and Riley, thanks a million. Have a great evening and uh, look after yourself. Oh, thank you, John. Really enjoyed it. Thanks so much. No problem.